Let's uh, check in on the Kenyan markets picture right now, reflecting first on trade as it played out in yesterday's session. We had the main stock index hitting its highest point in more than four years yesterday when the markets got their first chance to react to the mostly peaceful resolution of a dispute over the country's presidential vote. Kenya's Supreme Court upholding Uhuru Kenyatta's presidential election victory on Saturday and rival Raila Odinga quickly accepting the decision. So that calming fears of a repeat of 2007's election violence. We had the main NEC 20 share index up three and a half percent, building on six straight sessions of rises. That market closing just under 5,031 points. On the currency front, the Kenyan shilling broke through uh, the 85 mark, which was uh, pegged as resistant mark uh, to touch an intraday high of 84.65, 85 against the dollar in early trade before retreating. We've got the local unit spot on at that 85 handle right now. Let's get into some analysis of this market's picture now with Steve Biko, who's director at the Hidalgo Group. Steve, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Well, what I've been hearing That's is the election it. tension is over and the market is set to concentrate on business. This will mean more rises for the NSC. Are you as confident? Yes, uh, what you've actually seen, and it was evident yesterday, is that now the market is actually on a full uh, bullish run. And I think what's happening is um, it's automatically correcting itself, given the fact that it actually did l lose a lot of points when you go back five years ago in 2007, 2008. So what's happened to the market is that now, given the fact that the country is at peace, uh, in there's confidence in terms of investment. Uh, Kenyans have gone back to their work. The, 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 the new government is actually settling down to actually fulfill the promises that they, they did give to us Kenyans during the campaign period. We are seeing uh, the key strong fundamentals that are actually key to the macroeconomic aspect of the economy actually now you know coming forth and seeing that um, key companies yesterday all companies actually at the market went up so this is a it's a good sign and uh, I'm looking at the market actually hitting the 7,000 mark by the time you know we finish this quarter this is because we look at the finance sector which is doing very well the manufacturing sector which was really pegging its uh, stability on the election outcome and the fact that our Kenyans have shown faith in the Supreme Court decision shows that now we can actually go back and focus for the first time in five years, focus on business. 7,000 by the end of Q2. That's uh, very optimistic, uh, Steve. Let's take a look at some of the headwinds, though, that the market does face. Because despite all this expectation of foreign investment now beginning to rise in the near term, foreign investors are watching, for one, how Western and other foreign powers will deal with President Uhuru Kenyatta, who's been indicted by the International Criminal Court on charges for crimes against uh, humanity. How much concern does that trigger for you? It is a concern. I mean, it's an issue that um, no one wants to ignore. Unfortunately, what the international community needs to realize is that the Kenyan people have spoken, their will has been stamped in the ballot and affirmed by the Supreme Court. So what I think, given the importance of Kenya in terms of um, the region's uh, economic stability, uh, military stability, peace stability, and the fact that um, uh, given the connectivity of the Kenyan economy through throughout the region and into international markets, it's something that um, international partners actually weighing. Uh, those rumor of uh, you know, like countries like USA giving sanctions to the country if Uhuru is going to be elected. But now the fact that this is what under the bridge, I think uh, Uhuru's government is actually going to look at how to handle this from a diplomatic Steve, is it really water because under the bridge, though? Because the country's main aid donors follow a policy of only having essential contacts with indictees, and that could have severe implications for the country and economic growth. True, but what I think is that what people need to understand is Kenya is a strong uh, economy. If, if anything, I mean, yesterday alone, if you're looking at the key strong economic uh, indicators, uh, yes, we need the international partners, and yes, I think I know what I, I mean. What will determine a lot is a foreign policy from from Uru's government, and what I know is um, how they play about it will determine how essential the contact will be between the Western development partners and the East development partners. And I think the West will not want to be outrun by the the West will not want to be outrun by the East. So a lot a, a lot is going to happen, especially given how uh, the cabinet is going to be appointed and other key key issues in terms of forming the government after the inauguration is done on 9th of April. I know uh, Uhuru is actually pushing for the charges to be dropped. Uh, a lot of issues in terms of evidence, uh, you know, from a legal perspective, a lot of things are happening. But I think what we need to understand is the importance of Kenya in terms of Africa's, um, you know, growth 
point when you're looking at the Western view. And at the end of the day, I do not think any foreign government is going to ignore the will of the Kenyan people. This is something that actually, you know, the main protagonist, Uhuru, I mean, uh, Raila went to court, and Uhuru's victory was affirmed by the Supreme Court. And I believe any foreign government will actually be able to listen to this and say, yes, uh, we said we'll have uh, essential contact with, the, with Uhuru's elected government, but this has happened, so how do we go about it? I think Uhuru's government need to be very savvy in terms of um, foreign diplomatic uh, you know, discussions. Politics aside, Steve, they've the also growth. got to be very savvy in terms of economic policy moving forward and uh, how they're going to be steering yes. this uh, this economy. Because uh, p p uh, a second hurdle that's been uh, put up is, of course, the macroeconomic situation over in Kenya. We've seen a widening current account deficit presenting itself, that uh, current account balance widening by 26.3% in 2012 to $9 billion, and that reflecting uh, faster uh, growth in imports specifically. Uh, to what extent are you concerned about that? So let's shift attention to uh, from politics to the macro picture specifically. Of course, of course, the picture is not rosy. When you look at the key indicators, as you've pointed out, things are very bad. Actually, our market should not be actually be bullish but bearish because apart from just the stock market going up, other indicators are poor. We have, no, I mean, uh, unemployment is high. Lack of our, our, our import export ratio is imbalanced. We're looking at our foreign debt actually, you know, going over the roof. We're looking at our recurrent exp expenditure, which is unsustainable. The only way that Uru government is actually going to be able to tackle this is one by putting in place a, gov a, 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 a cabinet that is actually geared towards implementing the promises they, they put through in the manifesto during the campaigns. That is one. And two, they have to be very savvy in terms of bringing on board key development partners, both from the West and the East, in terms of being able to push key development program especially in terms of we have we have we've been able to see that a kibaki government has been able to develop key infrastructure developments but these key infrastructure developments are not unified in a way to be able to trickle down to the economy to bring positive change what we need to see is we need to see a government to be able to get jobs be able to handle uh, reduce expenditure be able to i mean create more you know a, a scenario where we have more exports and less imports and also just being able to, you know, being able to see an, an environment whereby we have more business going on through all, all partners. Because when you're looking at m most of our programs, like for example, the AIDS program, it's fully funded by the West. So we cannot actually wash away the, 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 the West the yeah. Western issues. Just so looking, looking Steve, government sorry, government because be we are sorry. running out of time here, looking at some of those election promises, Kenyatta's uh, coalition has promised to revive uh, the country's tourism sector and develop its oil and manufacturing industries as well. Just looking at some of the players that can leverage off a strategy like that, what's uh, go, uh, caught your attention? Uh, for me, what caught my attention is the fact that um, his focus on actually being able to handle corruption, which is a key impediment in terms of business growth, in terms of the tendering procurement process. And this will actually handle a lot in terms of being able to create industries. Because as a country, we need industries, we need to produce more to be able to, to, to balance the import-export ratio. And this, I believe, will be able to create employment, will be able to improve our, our forex reserves, yeah. which in return will actually be able to create, I mean, the ripple effect on the economy will be huge. So I'm hoping that his cabinet will actually be able to handle this very well going forward.